Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about Asian pears. This video is going to be very long because I have been recording updates month to month since last November. So um, make sure to check the timeline in the, in the description. That way you can go exact to the months that you're interested in. So uh, over the years uh, growing these pears, I have struggled with multiple things. And I think if I uh, list these out, it's gonna really help you uh, if you're starting to grow pears for the very first time. So last year I had, for the first time, had a really big problem with rust and it destroyed my whole entire crop of, uh, of last year. I think I got like two fruits out of all the pear trees that I had. So um, rust is such a big problem around here because I think they have cedar and juniper trees growing somewhere uh, near here. So. Uh, the rust need the combination of cedar and uh, junipers or whatever and pears and apple to sort of like create the cycle and uh, I didn't do any spraying last year because I wasn't aware but this year I started to do some spraying and uh, that uh, help has helped so far and uh, my fruits are, are looking good right now and um, you're gonna see in a little bit uh, we're in May so uh, the spray that I used uh, was a dormant spray when the, the trees were still in its dormant stage. Uh, it was still sleeping, the buds have not come out yet. So I spray that uh, like uh, every two weeks uh, until it started to open buds. Uh, and then up until when it started to open the flowers, I stopped spraying because when, when the flowers open, you get bees and all this stuff, other beneficial bugs that would come and visit. And so I stopped spraying until the buds have dropped and uh, the flowers become fruits. And then I started to spray with a uh, rust, uh, what are these, uh, these um, uh, fungicide. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you that on the screen if you want to see uh, the exact one I'm, I'm, I'm doing. But I spray that uh, in the evening where there's no bugs coming to visit. And also because you don't want the sun beating down on the, the tree why and then you know you spray it could potentially burn the leaves but that has helped so far and the trees are just looking really beautiful and lots and lots of fruits right now so I'm gonna go around and show you what it looks like um, from last November of last year until May of this year so um, enjoy the video Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today is November 8th, 2020, and we are going to continue the pear series. So my pear trees have been with me now for it, over three years now. So they are well established and uh, growing very nicely. So I'm going to do a video to follow through um, monthly. Um, so each month I'll come out and record and let you see how the pear progress throughout the season So right now it is uh, getting into winter. So the leaves are starting to fall So um, the, the pear trees are just amazing plants and they produce amazing beautiful flowers in the spring So I wanted to capture that and show you in this one video. So you're going to see um, where the plants will drop all the leaves then the leaves will come back and then they'll get flowers and then maybe possibly to the end of the year where they produce some fruit so uh, here it is let's take a look at the few plants that i have or a few trees that i have uh, this is the shinko right here it is growing beautifully and i have another one of the same variety that i grew in a pot they were basically the same size but because the other one was growing in a pot it kind of grew a lot smaller so I finally placed it in the ground so it's trying to catch up so I'll show you that right now okay here it is this is the one that is bought the same time same size but because it was growing in a pot it didn't grow as much as the other one so I took it out and placed it in the ground so now it's doing very well so the leaves are starting to fall So eventually, it, uh, once it goes into December and uh, everything freezes over, it's going to drop all of the leaves. So these pear trees are very hardy. They can survive down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So winter would not be a problem for them. And I have my four-in-one apple. 
Okay, and this is the four in one pear tree. And I recently cut the branch up there because it was grown too tall. So I want everything to be around the same size. I may trim it a little bit more so that it can be the same size with the rest of them. And here is my uh, Korean giant. And also I trim that branch right there because I want everything the same size. I don't want everything too tall. So I'm trying to keep it around maybe under 10 feet. This one was the smallest tree that I bought. It was basically a branch that was around this size right here. And in two years, that's how much it's grown. Look at that. So it's a very big plant tree right now. And it does produce uh, flowers every season, just the fruits didn't stick. And you must have a persimmon tree. These are just amazing plants that produce like beautiful fruits that are so delicious. They're very easy to maintain. So you, you know, if you're growing fruit trees, this is highly recommended. So those are my trees. I will show you progress throughout the year. So we'll check back in a month. And this is the larger Shinko tree. There's still a few leaves remaining. Then we have my lime, Persian lime. Uh, Persian limes are usually one of those that would stay green throughout the whole season here in Texas. So the leaves are still there. And here is my four-in-one apple tree. And lastly, another Shinko that is a little bit smaller. And all of the leaves are gone. Here is the four-in-one Asian pear tree. And the rootstock right here uh, sprouted some, uh, some sides. Uh, usually you need to trim these, but I'm gonna use that to graft something else on it, maybe. And here is the larger Shinko tree. So if you take a closer look, you see these uh, the fuzzes here. And those are gonna sprout new leaves and uh, uh, new buds in the spring so uh, it's gonna look very pretty that's my lime tree all the leaves are still there this is a four-in-one apple tree uh, it's starting to shed most of the leaves and lastly the smaller shingle tree Okay, we are in February and this has been the craziest year I have ever experienced. I mean, literally the craziest year. I have never seen this much snow in February before, but uh, today it is starting to melt. So um, we should be back to good weather in about a few days. So uh, here is my persimmon tree. It's doing great, it's still alive, I think because the branches are still looking great uh, it's covered in snow at the bottom here but um they should uh, bounce back very soon once the uh, the warm weather hits and here is my korean giant and uh, the, the great thing about asian pears is that they can live through winter down to negative 10 degrees so uh yeah this this type of weather is not going to be a problem for them so if you are uh, wanting to grow a pear tree, yep, it's a, it's a great type of tree to grow in very cold places. So here I started to do some um, air layering and <laughs> I didn't know that the, uh, the weather is going to be this crazy. So I started it um, in, uh, uh, in January, but um, I'm not sure that's going to make it. But I, my graphs are looking good, so I will show you guys that in the coming months once it gets warmer. And I also started to uh, train the branches because I didn't like the way it grows too close and upward. So I wanted to spread out a little bit so that, um, you know, when the leaves are full, the wind and, uh, you know, uh, 
can get through and give it some good air circulation. So that is why we have these, uh, these branches pulled by these ropes and stakes. Okay, and here is the four in one pear tree. I'm doing the same thing, I'm training it to uh, spread apart a little bit. And I'm gonna have to do some additional trimming because that branch, that's the hosui, is much taller than the rest. You see here? So that's why I need to trim it a little bit. So make sure they're all the same length or height. And I started to do some graphs right here. So I have a few graphs going on. So I'll show you guys that more later. And this is the Shinko pear. Also, I have some graphs. You see the, the labels over there. So I will show you guys that soon. Here's the lime tree. I'm not sure it's gonna make it. It's never been this cold before, so the leaves are very damaged. So we'll have to check back and see. Apple tree is fine. And the last shinko pear. Okay, today is March 10th, 2021. And this is going to be one of the most important months to do update on pear trees. One reason is because I'm able to show you the type of pears that are compatible to each other because this is a time when you can see uh, which varieties will break dormancy. So when you grow those together, it helps with pollination. So um, also because uh, th this month is when they start to bloom and it is the prettiest time of the year. So March and April will be the times when I do more and more updates uh, frequently just to show you how pretty they are. Uh, excuse the wind is it's crazy today but anyway here is my persimmon and uh, it has not uh, broken dormancy yet it's still uh, waiting so it should be breaking um, out uh, within a few weeks okay here's the important part um, this is a four in one tree and uh, it's gonna show you uh, which are best and most compatible to each other so that you can buy the same variety and grow them in your yard and it will help pollinate each other for more fruits. Uh, most of these Asian pears, you don't need a pollinator, but if you don't have a pollinator, it will not produce as many fruits. So it, it will be like very little, but with a pollinator, you're gonna get a lot more fruits. So here we go. Um, you see here, this is the Hosui and that one has already broken dormancy you see there's there's uh, buds coming out breaking through and here is the jojiro and you can see here it's also started to break dormancy so it's pushing out so when these two are um, gonna bloom they will help pollinate each other so those are most compatible and this one here is a shinsiki and it's it's a little bit slower but i think it's starting to break dormancy as well but it um it's it probably gonna take a, a, a few more days or maybe weeks and then these here are um the stock the root stock and because it has three branches and i didn't want to cut it off so i grafted something else on top of it you see so now i have uh, instead of four in one it'll be five in one I think this one failed. Uh, it's kind of got black over here, so it's probably gonna die. So that one may may not work. And I have another one here. I think that one's looking okay also, but we'll check back later. And then uh, this is the Hosui. So I cut the top of the Hosui, and then I grafted it onto my pear tree that I grew. Uh, this is a I think it might be uh, almost two years old so I chopped it right here and I inserted the top you see and then that one that's the Hosui right here the top uh, the bottom I'm not sure I don't remember what it is but it is an Asian variety and it, so far so good I'm, I'm not gonna take this off yet but I will soon but the top piece is alive and looking great and it is about to flower and here is my shinko and I also grafted a few branches onto the shinko 
here's one over here and the crazy snowstorm that we had killed my lime tree i think it's dead everything from the top is dead so maybe it'll grow from the bottom i'm not sure but as long as it doesn't grow from the rootstock the rootstock is a different variety so the the grafted one is on top if the graft is dead i'm gonna yank it out and my four in one apple tree apple tree can stand very very cold weather so no problem with that and the last one here we have the shinko and it is looking good also okay today is march 17th and we have more action going on with the pear trees the korean giant finally put out some buds there it is that is a fruiting bud so hopefully i'll get maybe one or two fruits this year uh, we got flowers last year but they all fell off okay and the four in one look at this they all started to bloom so i wanted to do an update to show you something uh, that you should watch out for because this time of the year is when these bugs will start to come out and start to eat everything okay you see these guys here these are cucumber beetles and this time of the year is when they will start to come out and they eat your pears and everything they eat everything they're called cucumber beetles but they they just eat whatever they can find and they're very destructive so i just got these two off of my pear tree and uh, let me show you the damage that they did already okay so here uh, when you see them on the pear tree early like this they'll eat the buds you see they, they'll eat and kind of destroy the the opening fruits right here so they'll eat the leaves they'll eat the flowers they'll eat basically anything that they can get their hands on they're very bad bugs so if you see them get rid of them immediately and i always get them every year so uh there's um there hasn't been a year where i don't see them yet but you see they'll eat the flowers open and um if they eat enough of it then the that these fruits here will just be dead so uh make sure to watch for them and don't let them eat your pear uh, buds or your, your flowers or even the leaves they eat the leaves as well and also this time of the year is when aphids are very prominent so I found a few already these are you're gonna see flying aphids um, they're gonna land on the leaves and then they'll they'll start to multiply so if you see these flying aphids um, make sure to look it up first so you can see a picture and you can identify them and uh, when you see them on um, your pear tree or, you know they're, they're usually around the leaf area and when they're leaves they'll be on the leaves and they'll start to multiply they look like a uh, fungus gnats but a little bit bigger so watch out for those and uh, just get rid of them as soon as you see them but anyway the buds are coming out for all of these here and this the 20th century is still a little bit behind so we have the hosui and jojiro and uh Shinsiki, see those are all uh, fruiting up nicely, which are putting out buds nicely. And for my uh, pear tree that I grew from seed, I transplanted them into the larger pot, giving more space to grow. And here it is right here, and it's starting to open. So this time of the year is my favorite for pear trees because they look amazing. They're beautiful this time of the year and look at my shinko buds are coming out looking really nice you see so i found a few aphids on here already so i picked them off so uh these are uh, fruiting buds and these are flower i mean uh, sorry leaves you see so um they're gonna be lots and lots of uh of flowers coming out very soon see the apple is starting to break dormancy here so we got some buds poking through and this other shinko look at that very beautiful right now lots of uh, fruiting buds all forming so very very exciting time of the year so I'll come back in a few days and give you guys another update because it's gonna look really really nice very soon 
Okay, today is March 18th and I'm coming back very often to do updates because this time of the year is the best time and if you just missed a few days, you're going to miss some of the most beautiful flowers on these pear trees. So uh, I'm going to go through this quickly. So uh, the Korean giant is starting to put out buds here and there are more buds and there's buds right there and guys remember this time of the year is when the aphids come out I caught a, a few already on my pear trees and I took them all off so here the four in one look at how beautiful it is right now you see the flowers have already opened and they're very fast they're just open in a day or two and then they're gone so if you don't capture the footages then you'll miss the, <laughs> the opportunity so uh, they're very beautiful look at that so there's no leaves yet, but the flowers are the ones that come first. You see here, flowers here, and within a day they'll open. And here, see these are a little bit later. And this here, the 20th century is way late, you see? So that is the reason why uh, to ha you, you want pears to have flowers at the same time to help pollinate. So if you wait a week, it's a, it may be a little late already. So get, get varieties that are, are very, very compatible and uh, open up at the same time. And my other graft here, look at that, the flowers are opening, you see, everything is looking good. And look at this, this is the Shinko, and look at all the buds are starting to open, you see. And I caught a few cucumber beetles, which I got rid of immediately, so don't let those guys come and eat your, your, your flowers or your leaves, they're very destructive. And then uh, we get a lot of aphids. Uh, and ants carry them around so uh, I got those electrical tape right there I use electrical tape because they're stretchable and so it will allow the plants to, to the tree trunk to grow and it would not hinder anything and then I put um, tango foot around the base that way the the ants can't come up I also have another barrier right here so I, I just cut a McDonald cup right there and put around the tree and then I put the tango foot on top and then a, a secondary defense I put those tape there but uh yeah look at all of those buds so this year is, I'm hopeful that I will get more pears than last year and the apple just started to open you see and here is the other shinko pear and look at all of those blooms very very exciting I love this time of the year because pear trees look the most beautiful this time of the year okay today is March 20th 2021 and my persimmon is starting to break dormancy so we have buds coming out right here and they're slowly uh, sprouting all over the place see so persimmon are a little bit slower than pears but uh, once they bloom they bloom very quickly okay and here is my Korean giant and I'm very excited about this plant this tree this year because we have lots and lots of uh, fruiting buds right here last year there were only a few but they all fell off and this year there's much more and uh, see there's some over here too so they're gonna start to slowly form okay and here is the most beautiful tree right now that is the four in one and look at the flowers i saw a bunch of bees already uh, coming to visit so uh, you're gonna have to be very careful with the cucumber beetles because i've already caught a few you see these guys are not welcome on my tree so make sure to check for those uh, they're very hard to see sometimes they just hide behind there and they'll start eating and chewing on the flowers let me show you some of the damage that they did you see here so it chewed at the base where the stem is and this flower just fell off that's where it chewed and uh, it did a bunch more and again so uh, you see these compatible varieties they bloomed very much at the same time and the 20th century pear you see much much later so um, if you're gonna plant a hosui 
um, also get a Jojiro or a um, Shinsiki along with it. A Shinko works too because they, they also bloom very closely and my Olympic Giant is, is also uh, probably a few days behind but these two are the most compatible. You see they bloom at the same time. Uh, if you get this one here by the time these blooms the flowers on those were already dropped so um, the, the chances of them pollinating uh, is much lower but on uh, 20th century they're, they're self pollinators so they, there's no worry about them they'll just have their own fruits without any pollination and the shinko pear look at this man they are looking gorgeous right now you see all of the blooms are starting to come out so uh, we see some flowers already opening up but more of, are starting to come and this this plant here produces the most of uh, all my pear trees look at that you see that all of these are fruiting buds see those are fruiting buds all of them and uh, many times I have to pull some of these off because they're just so many and uh, they also fall off on their own as well so um, uh, you're not gonna get <laughs> this many fruits I think half of the tree is gonna fall off on their own depending on the size of the plant or the size of the tree uh, if it can't support it it'll drop it also uh, if your tree is too small you really don't want it to uh, to bloom you need to cut off the bloom and allow it to focus on uh, growth first and then uh, once it's big enough then you can allow it to fruit that way you get a, a nice big tree that can support the fruits okay my apple four in one apple see this one is starting to to come out the rest are still behind and the last shinko here look how beautiful that is see these flowers come out very quick so if you don't catch the blooms uh, for like a week or so that <laughs> they'll be gone so um, this time of the year is the best time to come out and you know snap pictures and and watch for the blooms because they come and go very very quickly and then after that your tree is gonna be all green actually it would be like that red color first and then the leaves get larger and it becomes green okay today is March 29th 2021 so this is going to be the last update in the month of March <laughs> so here is my persimmon this is the Fuyu variety and all of the uh, leaves are starting to come out so right after the leaves formed it's gonna go into little branches and then from that branches uh, they're going to have a lot of fruits showing up so I will show you that in April and here is the Korean giant and as you can see everything is pretty much green now so the period of flowering is very short just like uh, maybe a week or a week and a half so uh, yeah everything is looking great the pear tree is growing and the flowers are still open so that is a, a good thing so this would help um, pollinate some of the late late bloomers I will show you that and here is my four in one and as you can see here the 20th century is the latest bloomer so everything has already set fruit you see here these are already turned into fruits and these just started opening up flowers so um, the most compatible variety to this particular uh, 20th century is the Korean giant and I have the Korean giant red graft right here so you can see the graft took and it looks great and there we are so you can see it the flower is starting to come out and I have a lot of bug damage so you see here all of these little um, fruit got bit off already before it even started to bloom there's a ton of them that got bit off so uh, make sure you check for bugs on your plants because they they will do a lot of damage if you have many of them then your fruit will be all bitten off like see the tips are all bit off so um, yeah keep an eye out for those bugs and uh, my graphs are looking great I just want to show off so here is another graft and this is also the Korean giant and 
shinsiki. Uh, some of them already became uh, fruits, but the other remaining flowers are also just started to open. So they, they will also pollinate uh, the 20th century. So um, flowers do bloom uh, at different times. So you, you, you may get a, a few that comes late and then they will also help. But as, as far as compatibility, you want plants that always bloom at the same time for the best results. And the hosui, uh, you see, all of them are already becoming fruits because that is the earliest bloomer of all of the pears that I have. And uh, yeah, they are, they are looking great, you see. Oh, look at all those fruits. So we're gonna have to uh, trim those. Uh, so thin them out later because there's just too many for that branch to handle. And then for the other graph that I did, this is the Korean, uh, what is it? Hosui. This is a Hosui on top. And this is the one I grew from seed. And it pollinated, you see? And there's a fruit right there. So some are gonna fall off because this tree is not big enough to support too many fruits. So I may, I may get one, I may not, but that's fine. I just know that the grab worked and I'm happy about that. And the Shinko pear, lots of them uh, already turned into fruits. Uh, flowers are, are starting to drop. Uh, there's some late bloomer that are starting to come out like these here. And there's some up there, but uh, there are already some that uh, already formed into fruits right here so you see the the flowering phase is very short so if you don't catch it on time you're not going to get to see the beautiful flowers and then after that all you see are going to be green leaves here's my apple so i decided to chop the top right here to make them even so there's they're starting to come out see the buds are coming out right now and the last shinko most of them are already formed into fruits you see the flowers are starting to drop okay we are in april 12 2021 and uh, here we start with the korean giant man this is a beautiful looking pear tree right now and it is getting pretty tall but that's the tallest i'm gonna let it grow i'm gonna trim after this year just to that that's it i'm not gonna let them grow anymore but uh yeah the fruits are forming it's uh, going to um keep growing and also what you need to do is you need to prune uh, the pear will prune itself throughout uh the months but uh if you see bad looking pears you can also help uh, the tree prune as well but you see there uh, those are beautiful uh, looking pears right now it's gonna get larger and larger so it sticks up right now but as it gets heavy it's gonna start to hang down um, the I, I've been using these uh, bags here to help um, keep the pears from getting damages and all that stuff so uh, I used it for the past few years and it's working those are just um, jewelry bags so I'll show you um, uh, what they look like they, they have drawstrings so they're easy to use and uh, you just put it around your pair pick a perfect one and then uh, just wrap it in that way it doesn't have any blemishes and it'll help protect the pears from pests and all the other stuff so yeah the Korean giant and uh, here we have uh, I peeked in here uh, earlier and the the area where I started the uh, the air layering is uh, already um, forming callus so it should root uh, probably in a month or so uh, but I'll keep checking and if, it, if it's successful I may do another update uh, in a different video to show you but uh, yeah look at how beautiful that is it's all green now the flowers have all dropped because it's past that time and then let me show you my graft the graft is doing amazing look at this you see here so the graft is a success that is the shinko pear right there grafted onto the korean giant and it has fruits you see there's a fruit right there i'm wrapping it right now to uh to make sure that we get a good nice and beautiful fruit without any blemishes so we have two actually that are from there 
and uh, the other graph that's the only graph that's uh, that was a success the other one failed but uh, I'm still happy regardless okay here is the four in one so everything is greening up as well so uh, the Jojiro is the one that produce the least uh, most of the fruits have already dropped I guess because it's the smallest branch so usually if you have four different varieties you want to keep them all at the same length that way uh, one is not dominant over the other so uh, the Hosui is actually the dominant one right there so I kind of chopped it off at the top and uh, it still get a lot of fruits but uh, yeah I'm wrapping it up, this up to make sure I get a fruit this is the 20th century here you see so these these are you can help the prune like that just throw those away they're gonna drop anyway because they're the the little ones that's not gonna do much so uh, see this one has a few there's a bunch up here so I'll let it get a little bit bigger then I'll prune the little baby ones and here's my graft this is the graft right here look at that it's working and uh, the fruit dropped for this one <laughs> so there's nothing there that that is a Korean giant and then I have another one here this is a Korean giant we have two fruits right there uh, this may snap later if I let the fruit grow see that that's where we grafted it so I may have to do some support for that one because the branch is super skinny and then I did a new one here and I think that's working so what I do is I, I pick out all the the, the original uh, buds so that it can focus on the new shoot. And let's see here we have uh, this one is the Shinsiki. See, got some pears, got some pears up there. So uh, continue to prune because if there are so many here, they're gonna either drop on their own or it's gonna weigh down the plant and it might snap the branch if there are so many so I usually prune and I only leave a few and the Hosui Hosui is doing the best out of all of these see got lots and lots of fruits so I'll prune more later I prune a bunch of them already so usually prune the baby ones so that one's gonna fall anyway or the ones that look bad Okay, and here is my other graft. See, this is where I chopped the top of the, the pear tree that I grew from seed. And I grafted the Hosui on top. And that is growing beautifully. Everything healed up nicely and it's been growing for a few months now. It had a few fruits, but it dropped it. So I guess it's not ready. And uh, maybe next year I'll let it fruit. And the Shinko, this is the bigger one. You see all of the bags that I have. Those are all of the ones that I'm trying to make sure they will produce beautiful fruits without blemishes. But uh, this one is gonna be uh, probably the most productive one because it's the largest. And it has fruits um, pretty much on every single branch. So last year I lost all of my fruits to rust. So this year I've been spraying the, the plant. Do you see this here? Those are bad fruit anyway, so prune those off. So even if they grow, they're gonna look really bad. So go around, check. Make sure there's no aphids. I've, I've spotted a bunch of winged aphids on here. So I took them off. But uh, also the cucumber beetles have been on here as well. They eat leaves and sometimes they bite onto the fruits. Let's see, the graft that I did for this one is a Korean giant graft. And it took, the graft is right here, you see? That's where the graft is. And this branch here is the Korean giant. It's growing, there's no fruit on there. But uh, it's okay. Hopefully next year it'll do something. It'd be cool to have a mix of fruits in there. And the other grafts that I did pretty much failed so out of three that I did I got one that was a success which I'm very happy about beautiful tree okay and here is my four-in-one apple tree you see I 
cut the top right here and I cut it right here so that this bud can grow on the outside. I want space in the middle for airflow. So that's why I let this one grow. And I did the same for that one. I cut right there so this side can grow on the outside. So uh, the, out of the four varieties, we have fruits right here. Only for the, um, let's see here, the golden delicious, the red delicious, and the gala apple. The only one that didn't have fruit uh, is the Fuji. And the Fuji is actually the, the one that's grown the, the best. But yeah, nice looking apple tree right there. And the last shingle pear. And this one shows a lot more fruits, I guess maybe because the, you know you can see through it. There's not as many leaves as the other large shingle. But you see, it left fruits everywhere. Look at that. Every single branch, there's fruits. Look at that. It may be too many for this plant, so more uh, pruning will be done. Like this here, this is the little one that's bad anyway. So there, lots and lots of fruit on every single branch. Okay, and here's the giant Fuyu that I just bought, but I'm placing this in a pot for now. And I'm also going to probably chop this branch down to around right here, because I don't want the branch to be like this. Or I may just air lay it first and then chop it off and have the plant grow from here. That way it's a straight and there's a, it's centered. Okay, and here is the persimmon, the Fuyu persimmon. It finally started to bloom and there are lots and lots of fruits. The Fuyu persimmon always produce a ton of fruits. See, these are fruits right here. So at every single node, you're gonna see a little fruit and, and there are lots and lots of fruits. They're super, super productive. Uh, they're gonna prune themselves. They will fall off throughout the season but I'm gonna get still a good amount of fruits for these. Okay, we are now in May and my persimmon is looking beautiful. This tree is producing a ton of fruits. Look at all this right here. So some of them have already been pollinated and they are going to start growing and growing and remain um, a fruit until it's ready to harvest in, I think, October. So, uh, there are fruits on every branch. I love this tree, uh, persimmon in general. They're just very, very productive. And so you see here, if the flower gets pollinated, see this part right here just dry and fall off and that becomes a fruit. So every single branch here has fruits on them. Uh, I think the tree is going to drop some because there's just too many. They always overproduce and then they drop some uh, throughout the the season and then you end up uh, still you're gonna get a ton of fruits so every branch even the little branch here has fruits so it's fruits everywhere so it's a very beautiful tree um, it's a easy type of tree to grow and uh, the fruits are delicious and you get plenty <laughs> okay and here is the giant fuyu that I added and it finally broke dormancy probably about a week and a half or two ago and uh, there's nothing that's gonna come from this this year because it's still very young and still very small but I'm very excited to see what it's gonna produce when it produces okay and here is my Korean giant and this is the first year that it uh, actually produced uh, more fruits and uh, it's looking great. So we had hail uh, about a week ago and it damaged a lot of the fruit so I had to come out and pick it off, you see here? That's the damage from the hail that we had. So if you have uh, damaged fruits on, on your tree, just pick them off and throw them away because that way the tree can spend its energy on producing the other fruits that are not damaged. So you have nice um, fruits that, that look clean and not bruised. But uh, yeah, you see, there, there are lots of pears right here. I'm very excited about this because I have not had a, uh, a fruit from this tree yet. So um, I'm not sure what's going on here, the ants over there. But yeah, this is uh, gonna be the first year 
that I get fruit from, from this Korean giant, so I'm very excited. And my uh, air layering, uh, I'm not sure how it's going, but I haven't seen any roots yet. Here is the four in one. It is now, I think five or six in one, because I added additional grass right here. So that one's healed up nicely. It even has a, a fruit right here. And this one as well, there's a fruit right here. And also this one healed up nicely. And then this is the newest one that I added and it also took, so that's another graft. And I think I mentioned it before, but these branches are from the original rootstock and I didn't want to cut it off. So I graft something else on top of it. Now the tree is a, a six in one. So here, uh, let's see what we, we have here. We have the Jojiro. So I have these bags to cover to protect it. And the Shinsiki here. Lots of fruits up here. You see, the, there's some damage here, so I need to prune those off. And I think this is the 20th century. A few fruits. Not much for that. And then that's the Hosui. Hosui is doing the best because it's the biggest and it has the most fruits. And it's probably going to be bigger than the rest. You see, pretty good size right there. And here is my tree that I grafted from the one I grew from seed. You see, it took, it's doing well. So on top is the Hosui and the bottom, I'm not sure. I got the seeds from pears that I bought at the Asian supermarket. And it actually fruited, but I picked it off because I, di I didn't want it to fruit yet. I don't want it to wade uh, down the top and may break. And here is the Shinko. This one is actually uh, doing very well. Lots and lots of fruits. And I'm covering these up to protect it. There are fruits everywhere. I think I'm going to get like maybe 50, 60 fruits from this one. So there's some at the top over there. There's some on the underside here. All the way here. Even as low as here. So uh, yeah, it, it is also the, the best looking tree I have right now. My apple tree here, this is a four in one. And there's some fruits right here. We have the gala apple, the red delicious, golden delicious, and the Fuji. The Fuji didn't uh, produce anything this year, but the rest of them did. See, there's fruits right here, fruit there, and a few on this, not many. And the top, I trimmed the top off to make them all even, so now they're growing back nicely. I'm trying to keep this tree as small as possible. And finally, the other Shinko, and this is a smaller one, but man, the fruits are just everywhere on this tree. And I plucked off a bunch of them. Fruits here have some damage. And you can see this more because it, uh, <laughs> it doesn't have that, that many leaves as the other one. So it's easier to see the pear. So uh, everything is looking great for this. Okay, so that is it for the pear series this year. Uh, maybe later on the in the season, once uh, the pears are ready to be picked, uh, I may do another update. But for now, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video so far. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.